Good morning, everybody. This is Brent Budrow here with the Furrow. Thanks for uh, joining us here today. Please like and subscribe if you like what you see. Today, I'm here with Dan Childs. Okay. Thanks a lot, Brent. So uh, we're standing here in uh, what I call my Palmer Amaranth Garden. Um, hopefully, you don't have a garden like this at home, but uh, it's about an acre block that's uh, about 99% uh, Palmer Amaranth. And, uh, and it's here because we do a lot of experimentation with different weeds and so this is the, the monoculture of, of Palmer and so we're experimenting with different uh, herbicide products and uh, so I just want to kind of touch on Palmer and water hemp here uh, at this site. So if you're looking uh, around me you can see all kinds of different uh, what we call phenotypes or different uh, looks to the, uh, to the Palmer. Um, the reason is uh, Palmer has is called dioecious. So it has a male plant and a female plant. And so this plant right here is male. I don't know if the camera will pick it up or not, but when I shake it, there's pollen dust that comes off of it. And it's really soft when you touch the spikes, okay? And then this one here, Brent can grab that. <laughs> yeah, <it's>, Pokes uh, you. <laughs> it does poke you. It's, it's uh, got little spines on the bracts. So the little bracts are the little uh, features, uh, structures that cover the flower. And so the males are soft, but the females have those bracts. And it's the females then that produce the seed. And the females can produce anywhere from 500,000 to a million seeds per plant. Imagine, uh, you know, a million seeds coming up in your, in your fields. That's why this weed is so tough uh, to, to tend with, not only because it's hard to control, but it just is so prolific, right? It can take over. A um, little history, a little background on Palmer. Palmer actually originated from the desert, the Sonoran Desert. So it's a, it's a desert-loving plant. Really? It loves arid uh, conditions. So many years ago, starting off in the desert, then it moved in the south, invaded the cotton country, and then it came up to the Midwest, either uh, with, with cotton seed hulls or in hay or equipment, or I even heard a story about cattle had eaten some and it was in their gut, and then, you know, the manure was spread around. So. Uh, that's how it kind of got its foothold in the Midwest. Now, when we have really wet springs, like we've, we've had wet springs, mm -hmm. uh, this year wasn't so wet, um, but we don't see a whole lot of Palmer in those type of conditions because again, it, it likes desert conditions. Okay. Now its cousin, the water hemp, is just the opposite. The water other dirty hemp, word. <laughs> yes, water hemp, hence the name water, loves wet conditions, and so you see more water hemp in, in a wet year. So this in a dry year, water hemp in a wet year. Um, Palmer, for the most part in Indiana, um, has been kind of localized. You have some, some communities where you have Palmer, and generally you can kind of trace that back to maybe a, a livestock production where they you know, spread the manure around, and, and so you, know, you had some issues like that. Water hemp is, is primarily in all the counties now. You know, it's, it's everywhere. And so, um, but we, we tackle both of them the same way. Um, we, we need to start with a pre-emergent herbicide. That is a must. We talked about that on some earlier videos where we have to have something pre, both in corn and soybeans, and then when we follow with that post-emergent application, about 21 days, 30 days after planting, we add another residual with that, that early post-application. That is a must for these things because they will uh, come up later. You only have multiple flushes throughout the year. Um, a few years ago, I took a picture of a palmer plant. It was this big. Mm -hmm. Actually, I used my uh, my chapstick to show it was about as large as my chapstick here, and it had a seed head on it. Wow. Okay. And that picture was taken in October. Really? So it came up, and it said, hey, it's, it's fall. I have to start reproducing before the frost comes. You know, the weed knew that, and so that small, it started to put a seed head. So... These things, I mean, it's just the number one enemy that we have is a Palmer and water hemp. So a question for you. Um, sometimes we see this come up through beans late season, yeah. and they almost stay underneath the canopy, and then they come up you know, late August, September. What are some things guys can do at that point, or is there anything you can do at that point when you have these late escapes coming out? There isn't a whole lot you can do. It's, okay. and, and, and where we do have late escapes, uh, maybe you know the the uh, the crop is thin in those okay. areas, and so it really comes down to you know agronomics. You know, planting a good variety that that can that can canopy quickly. You know, get up good a stand establishment, uh, adding pre's. I mean, there's a lot of things other than just herbicides. 
you know, we talked about it earlier today, have to have a good canopy. That's that shades the rows. The quicker we can shade the rows, the better. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, so there really isn't a whole lot you can do other than pull, hand pull. And I recommend that if you've got a few palmer plants out there in your bean field, okay. uh, because they'll just go to seed and you'll have a mess the next uh, 10, 12 years. Well, Dan, thanks for joining us here again today. You're it's welcome. always good to get together and learn about all the new things you're doing out here at the research site. Appreciate yep. it. My, my pleasure. Please like it, subscribe, and thanks again for watching the furrow.